That's what I said, bear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's understandable because it has all of these words. So. Yes. Oh, wow, one has a Siberian tiger, a wolf, a bison, I think. And a Maybe bear. you can color them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. It looks pretty cool. They're like games where there's like the traitor mechanic. Mm. <laughs> so I kind of like that one. I got mine. You can go. Yay! Yeah. I actually filmed this intro for the vlog at the park initially. So if you noticed last week, I didn't upload a video, mostly because there really wasn't anything to upload. <laughs> I have been doing a bit of work in the shop, but it's more of like really admin behind the scenes stuff. Like I've been emailing my manufacturer. I sent in two new enamel pins. They're my generic bookish enamel pins. I've been talking with my supplier about turning some of my enamel pin designs into necklaces and mostly it's just emailing <laughs> and I didn't really think that was really something super exciting to film and put in a studio vlog but just in case you're wondering yeah that was it <laughs> that was what I was doing. Oh by the way right now I'm standing on one of the rocks um, that are on top of a river. It's just a quite a shallow river. Well, in this area at least. And there are a lot of fish and they're very cute. I'm gonna show you them. Look at those fish. They're so near me, like I literally could just reach out and touch them. <laughs> I'm not going to, of course. But yeah, really cute. But then I realized that, yeah, maybe I should have elaborated on it a little bit more just in case some people are interested. So basically last week, it's the last week of November by the way for reference, I've mostly been just talking to manufacturers. So I was reordering two pins. One was the Six of Crows pin and the second was the Mr. Kindly pin and aside from that, I was talking to them about turning the Six of Crows and the Mr. Kindly pins into necklaces. So the Six of Crows one, I was able to talk to them about turning it into a necklace. But for the Mr. Kindly one, I had to pay a new mold fee, which was like $100 because basically they're going to rework the entire mold. That uh, extra $100 was not in my budget. So I skipped on making a Mr. Kindly necklace for now but the Six of Crows necklace actually also did have a mold fee but it was like around ten dollars so it's like okay fine so I ordered 50 pieces of regular pins for my six I can't talk <laughs> I ordered 50 pieces of pins so just like a regular reorder for my Six of Crows one and I also ordered 50 pieces of Six of Crows pendant necklaces. And for the Mr. Kindly one, I just did 
a normal reorder because I was running out of standards anyway. So the Mr. Kindy necklace is probably going to have to wait for like until next year or so but it is in the works and I do want to release it because I do want, honestly I do want a Mr. Kindly necklace. <laughs> I've also been talking to a new manufacturer. If you've watched my last studio vlog or if you've seen my Instagram stories, you'd know that I'm a bit um, disappointed with my new contact at my current manufacturer because basically they're like really vague and they only reply to questions they want to reply to. <laughs> And yeah, I was kind of a bit, a bit fed up with that. So this new manufacturer I actually found on Instagram. They are also from China, like my current manufacturer, and I think most pin manufacturers are from China anyway. And some of the pin makers that I follow also follow them, so I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I contacted them to produce my two new generic bookish enamel pin designs. So if you've been following me on Instagram, you would have seen both um, designs actually. And aside from that, I did record my screen while I was designing one of the two pins. So I'm going to show you a really quick screen recording of that one in a bit. So just hang in there. And lastly, I've also been talking to the printer that I work with for my stickers. And they did send my stickers over and I did a really quick unboxing which I'm going to show you right now. And that is Markiplier talking in the background. <laughs> my boyfriend and I were watching him while I was filming this short unboxing. And so as you can see, the generic bookish stickers turned out like really blurry and like I was like, what is going on here? And my Aurora Ryzen stickers one, I actually didn't notice it right away but it was also kind of blurry. If Especially when I compared it to my Six of Crows stickers. So I contacted my manufacturer about that and actually the reason why they were both blurry was because they printed the wrong file. I sent a really small JPEG file to my contact there asking like, you know, um, is this design okay for sticker printing? Do I need to change anything and stuff like that? And if they say okay, that's the only time I email them the actual final file, which is a high-res PDF in CMYK. So this time around, they printed the JPEG sample file instead of the actual PDF file. And so that's why they came out like really low res and blurry and just like eh. <laughs> But the good news is my manufacturer is going to reprint both stickers. My problem now is that I'm not really sure what to do with these stickers that have been misprinted. The Aurora Rising one isn't too bad, like I could probably sell them as seconds, like at a huge discount or something like that. But my generic bookish stickers ones, they're like super blurry as in like I wouldn't even want to sell them as seconds because they're just really bad. <laughs> and I don't want to give them away as, you know, freebies either because what if people see this sticker and think that 
that's the actual quality of all my stickers. <laughs> and so basically that's it. That's all I did for this week. It's just mostly a lot of emailing that's too boring to film. Oh, and as I mentioned earlier, here's the screen recording of me working on one of the two designs I have for my bookish pins. I hope you enjoy it! And I almost forgot to show you guys, but here are some pictures that my manufacturer took of my Lyra pin design. So as you can see, she's still missing the screen print and she's also missing the two gemstones on her trident, but it's looking good so far and it is in mass production now and I'm really excited. I really hope to see it soon. That means that it's also Inktober month. 
and this year I decided to participate. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do all the days but I want to do as much days as possible and so I thought that it would be nice if I took you guys on a quick sketchbook tour with the sketchbook that I showed you guys last studio vlog. So this isn't for Inktober, but I've been drawing a lot of hamsters recently. These are my prototype hamsters. I was just like practicing them, seeing what kind of hamster is the cutest for me. And eventually I decided on this one. Aren't they adorable? So actually, the reason why I've been drawing hamsters a lot is because recently, I don't know how it started, but my boyfriend and I started, you know, calling each other's hamsters and stuff like that. So that inspired me to start drawing little boyfriend and girlfriend hamsters. And they're wearing a kimono and a yukata because me and my boyfriend are actually going to Japan this month. I think it's around end of October. So yeah, that inspired me to draw this one. And here's more of the couple hamsters. I was also trying to draw a sleeping hamster, but I didn't like this drawing that much. A hamster that ate too much pizza. <laughs> and this is uh, the girl hamster. And this is one of my favorite drawings of the hamster. He's just like really sleepy and flat and <laughs> comfy. So eventually, me and my boyfriend decided to name the hamsters. So my boyfriend named them Hammond. And this is Hammond, which is based on my boyfriend, of course. And what he brings to work, which is the backpack and his little lunchbox and it's very cute. So this is Hammond and Harriet. And my boyfriend is recently sick so I drew a sad sick Hammond. Aww. <laughs> I think it's really cute. He's sad. He's wrapped in a blankie. All right, and now we are here at my Inktober drawings. So this one is Inktober, the first week, I mean the first day of Inktober and the prompt was a ring. So the background wasn't supposed to be there, but the ink from the other side kind of seeped through. <laughs> I mean, it's got a nice effect, honestly. I think I like it. It's actually this one. I drew a background because like there's this little smudge here and I was like I didn't like that there was a smudge so I was like how do I hide this smudge so I drew an entire background. <laughs> this is Inktober day two which is mindless plus sky. So mindless was the official Inktober prompt but uh, I also found this prompt list from Rena or Rena illustration on Instagram and I really like the prompt because it was like kind of like fantasy themed and stuff like that and I kind of liked it. So I combined both prompts for this drawing. More hamsters, not Inktober related, but here is Harriet drawing. Harriet taking care of a sick Hammond, and this is really cute. It's also one of my favorites. And this is a sleepy Hammond, and we actually have a cat, a cat stuffed toy that looks exactly like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Inktober day three is bait, the official Inktober prompt, and balloons, the other prompt that I'm following. Inktober day four is freeze plus cloud. And I actually don't like this photo that much. I know, I think it's just kind of messy and I think there's something wrong with their eyes. <laughs> but I mean, it's October and you have to draw a lot. So I figured like it wasn't worth redoing this entire drawing. Just like, you know, post it and go focus on the next drawing. Because I do want to complete as much days as I can. So this is the fifth day of Inktober, which is Build Plus Birds. And I wanted to draw something really cute, so here they are. It's a new bird family making their little nest. And that's it. That's, my, that's all that my uh, sketchbook contains right now. Hey everyone! So this is more of like a non-update. Mostly because there isn't anything to add that I haven't already said before or that you haven't really seen. Yet in this video, I did make a stretch bracelet inspired by the Darkling from Leigh Bardugo's Grishaverse series. Although I unfortunately wasn't able to film myself making it, but maybe someday, maybe in the future, I could film myself making some of the jewelry. And anyway, it's up on my website. Everything that's made to order is up on my website because basically I refuse to put anything that's made to order up on Etsy. It's a long story. Maybe someday I'll tell you that story, but not now. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and hit that bell button. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!